It was a gritty and unvarnished look at the opioid crisis. CBS News followed an addict through the streets of Boston as he scored his next fix. The unfiltered access and storytelling were powerful, but where does responsibility begin or end when you are just along for the ride? A man shooting up heroin on network news. That was just some of the dramatic video in the CBS Evening News special report in the shadow of death, Jason's journey. Jason Amaral's hunt for heroin began at 7.30 in the morning on a brisk day in downtown Boston. As the day went on, the CBS camera kept rolling. Even as it was clear, Jason had completely lost touch with reality. I just did some heroin and I was sick. And I just did a shot and I'm very, very high, like, and I feel great. The crew followed Amaral into a city hall bathroom as he crushed pills on a toilet. And then there was this, after Amaral and his shooting buddy finally secured some heroin. They prepared it while the friend's three-year-old child watched TV in the next room. There was a sense in some quarters it was exploitive. One viewer commented, there was a three-year-old in the next room. And while I hope the adults get help, who is caring for the baby? Apparently, no one from CBS. Well, this is an age-old discussion that we've had here. When do you get involved? When you, the reporter, there's that famous, I can't remember who did it, Fred Friendly, you know, do you just save the soldier or get the shot, you know? Right. Um, this, is, this was a very, very powerful story. We were all talking about it the next day. I mean, I don't really know what was going on with the three-year-old. Presumably, it wasn't totally unattended, but who knows, it was some drug head there or what. But, I mean, I guess... I guess I would have come down on the side of probably doing the same thing. You know, I don't think this story really raised any ethical dilemmas. I thought it was a terrific story. Uh, the drug user was actually kind of in the care that night of a friend of his mm -hmm. who had gotten off drugs a number of years ago. And he was taking go him to him. And it was taking him in. He was going into treatment the next day. I thought it was a really terrific, powerful piece of storytelling. I think any reporter would have done exactly the same thing if they had. What about had a going into the public kind of bathroom, access. though? When you know this is a place that. Well, you know, you're you're following the guy around. I I I mean, obviously he was engaged in illegal activity. I just don't have a problem with yeah. it. I, I think what's important here is that this he they got permission and informed consent from the guy, and the end point for this guy was he knew that this was going to be his last shot, if you will, that he was heading toward rehab. I don't, you know, if you just caught him unawares and you're there and you have to make a choice, do I watch the guy shoot up or do I shoot it? Maybe that's a different scenario. But this was, the scenes were not staged, but the informed consent was there. And they knew when they did this piece that the guy had already sought help. He well, wanted to get out. This is mm -hmm. an ongoing story that CBS yeah. is doing. So they yeah. are following him through mm -hmm. rehab. I think the next episode was him, you know, experiencing that first day of rehab. They're following him through the process. I agree. It was riveting. I had no no problem with it. I mean, there, you know, there, there's a larger social question about how, and I, I don't think the, the press is to blame for this. I think we're doing a better job now covering drugs in this opioid case as a human problem when it's sort of the white middle class drug user. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think previous drug war Wars have been covered in a completely different way, and yeah. I think this human reporting is incredibly moving and incredibly compelling. I totally agree that it was moving and compelling. I guess the one place where I think it's reasonable to say should the reporters have done or that the journalists have done something more is when you have the three-year-old in the room next door as this guy's shooting up. I think a child of his friends, correct? Mm -hmm. And in that case, I mean, it, it's helpful as we you know, float that question, or as I float the question, to think about the things that potentially could be done. Now, one option is you get out of that shoot and you call the Department of Social Services and you say, I'm a reporter working on this story. We just filmed this guy shooting up. He was doing it at a, at a friend's home and there was a three-year-old next door and I'm concerned about her safety. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to ask if a reporter should make a call like that in a situation like this. But then you run into, you know, what are the unintended consequences of that? Does that involve a child being taken out of their home? Yeah. Was the child placed in clear jeopardy while this was going on, or was it just uncomfortable because you heard her voice while the shooting up was occurring? But I don't think it's unreasonable to ask the question because someone else either, there in a different We don't know role. that they didn't. So that's we, the other we part. Don't they should have said they, they should have addressed point. that. Yeah. I think they, they should have yeah. addressed that in the story. I think yeah. so because it raised a question. The, the other no. thing too, I think, is that once the reporter. Uh, got involved in this story and there was an agreement that you're going to follow him around, you know you're going to be walking into some very dicey situations. You don't know exactly what, 
But I'm sure it wasn't a huge surprise that there was a three-year-old child in the next room. And frankly, I think at that point, if you just blow up the story and call in the DSS, um, nothing happened that you might not have anticipated, and you've done enormous damage to your career. True. I just True. want to point out that they knew that the end game was the guy had yeah. agreed to go to rehab. Right. Now, maybe yeah. that Seemingly. doesn't answer all the yeah. questions, and maybe it, it's I think we should all, he, he didn't always strike me as somebody these questions. who is really very serious about going to rehab. No, that's rehab. true. And, you know, yeah. one other thing, even if he has decided he's going to go to rehab, it is at least in the realm of possibility that over the course of filming this, and again, I thought it was, yeah. I didn't watch that documentary about heroin use on Cape Cod. This was the most evocative story I have seen in any format about heroin yeah. use. But it's always possible that you're filming the guy shooting up and he overdoses and dies. Die. And then in a way you're complicit with it. Yeah, yeah that's right.